Welcome to this edition of 10 TV Plus. I'm meteorologist Dylan Robichaud alongside Michael Behrens. Michael, we got our work cut out for us here. More snow, huh? Oh, yeah, we just can't catch a break from the winter weather. But, you know, this time around, we've gotten one big storm under our belts. I think we'll be a little bit more prepared for what's coming down the road this and, Friday. And I think what's wild is the fact that not only are we talking about Wildfires in California, which by yeah. the way, that's rare to get Santa Ana winds this time of the year, but we're also tracking a major snowstorm down here in Texas as well. We don't see this every day. Yeah, it's not just Ohio with the crazy weather going on this time of the year. I mean, everywhere in the country expecting winter weather or uh, inclement weather and it, that storm down south, it's going to wreck a lot of states when it comes to places that aren't used to that kind of condition. Yeah, absolutely. And this is going to be our problem too as we go into the next few days. So let's hop right into this this afternoon. All gonna set up. All right, we got not one. We actually have two different areas of energy. We got this area of low pressure down towards Texas, but we also have these cold front. These two kind of conglomerate together to form one big storm. And just take a look at the amount of ice that they're going to be getting here across the deep south. Some areas maybe a, a quarter to even a half of an inch, and that ice is going all the way towards northern Georgia, the southern Appalachian Mountains, out towards the Carolinas as well. You can kind of see how these two kind of work together. This is going to be this evening, so Little Rock, Arkansas, Oklahoma City, they're about to get a lot of snowfall here. You can see as this rides up to the north, here's that center of low pressure. We're pulling in that Gulf Mexico moisture, and we're going to be talking quite a bit of snowfall here across the Midwest tomorrow. From uh, the evening commute, we're going to be looking at some slick roads as that moves on through the area. Now, let's go ahead and move on. The National Weather Service has issued a winter weather advisory. They've actually extended this out to cover Pickaway County and Licking County as well, and it does include Franklin County. It goes into effect at 11 o'clock in the morning here on Friday and then expires at 7 a.m. heading into the day on Saturday. So what can you expect? Well, looking at some new model data here in the metro area, we kind of extended the impact time. All right. so. Before we were thinking later on in the evening, some of these model runs are getting snow into the metro as early as one o'clock in the afternoon. Also, some of our counties, especially our western counties, out towards places like uh, Eugene and Madison counties, they may pick up a quick one to four inches of snowfall here. It's going to be just enough to be a nuisance where you have to get out the shovels heading into tomorrow. Starting you off here at 12 p.m. Now, the snow is moving on in. Keep in mind at two o'clock, not all of it will be hitting the ground. So we will be getting some snow showers, but not all of it will be making it to the ground as we are expecting some drier air in the lower levels of the atmosphere. As we head towards six, seven o'clock again, the darker blues on the map, Newark, Mount Vernon, Circleville, getting in on some pretty good snowfall here. Then eventually by 9, 30, 10, 11 o'clock, things eventually start to improve as that snowfall moves on out. Updated snowfall map, the lighter shaded color, we're thinking one to three inches. <coughs> Excuse me. Then as we head off to the west, we're thinking two to four inches from Kenton down to Springfield and out to London as well. Town by town, here are my thoughts right now. Generally speaking, you head further west, your odds of snowfall go up. The further east that you go, your odds of snowfall go down. We could be talking two, maybe three inches, depending on exactly where you live. We are above average so far for the month of January by about five inches here in Columbus. But we don't typically average a whole lot of snowfall in this part of the state. As you head further off to the northeast, as you head towards northeast Ohio near Lake Erie, some areas get about 100 inches per year as you start kind of factoring that lake effect snow. And in fact, as we look at some of the snowiest towns in the state, look at Hamden Township, man. Almost 150 here. And then as we go down to Geneva, they get about 100 inches. So could be worse. If you like snow, this is the part of the state to go to. But here across uh, central Ohio, we're going to get our fair share of it here going into the next few days. All right, so we have that 10 TV weather impact alert day for tomorrow. And then heading into Monday, we're looking at another threat of snow. This is going to be a weak clipper system that's going to drive in some snow showers here on Monday morning. We're going to be looking at some a quick dusting to maybe a half inch that rolls on out of here. Then we get some drier air that moves back into the area on the back side of that system. And then another shot of cold air down to the single digits about a week out from today. Also, we have not been above freezing since the 3rd of January. 
And so it's been over a week and a half, and we're not expecting to get above freezing at all for the next week or so. So let's bring Michael Barons back into this. Michael, it's been so downright cold out here. We're not yeah. going to be looking at any improvements, no reprieve really anytime <laughs> soon. Yeah, I mean, we really need a, a break from this cold weather to sort of melt off some of the snow. And, and like you said, we barely maybe get to freezing by Monday, but it's not going to melt anything out there. It's not going to be melting anything. Yeah, so if you haven't had the opportunity to get out there and go sledding, you've got time because <laughs> this snow is going to be here for a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. The, the, the ski hills are, are going to love it for sure. I mean, they really need this kind of weather to, to help out their uh, bottom line in the winter. Yep. And you got some other tricks up your sleeve this afternoon, <laughs> some other cool stuff to talk about. Yeah. Thanks. To, uh, of course, all the cold temperatures creating some health risk in addition to uh, the snowy conditions out there, such as frostbite. It's important to remember that frostbite can happen fast, especially if you're outside for a long time without proper clothing. So here's what you need to know to avoid it. Experts say make sure you wear layers and cover any exposed skin. If you are someone, if you are someone you know starts to show signs of frostbite like pale, firm, or numb skin, make sure you go inside right away. Experts say don't rub the affected area to try to get it warm. That can uh, be dangerous there. Instead, use body heat or lukewarm water. If symptoms continue, make sure you get medical attention as soon as possible. And it's not just yourself that needs to be prepared, but your house too. It's important to prep your home to prevent pipes from freezing in extremely cold temperatures. The American Red Cross advises you to turn your faucet on a little bit just so there's a constant drip of water. Open cabinet doors to let the heat in near those pipes. Leave the heat in your house no lower than 55 degrees and close a foundation vents on the outside. Uh, we also spoke with leaders at a local heating and cooling business who offer some other important tips. You want to keep your garage doors closed. Um, some homeowners may have HVAC systems or hot water tanks in their garage, uh, and there are some water lines running to those units, and you don't want those to freeze and burst. Please disconnect any type of water hoses that are outside. Uh, this will help prevent uh, the, the pipes from bursting as well. And if you turn your faucet on all the way and the water comes out in a trickle, there's a good chance you have a frozen pipe. The Red Cross says shut off your water and find the area where that line is frozen. Experts say you can thaw a pipe with a heating pad, hair dryer, or space heater, but do not use a blowtorch, kerosene, or a propane heater. Also, make sure you keep the faucets on and running. Water will help to melt away more of that ice. And of course, to read more about how to prep your home, you can look at this story on 10tv.com. We also have a list of warming centers if you or anyone else you know needs a place to get out of the cold. Of course, we aren't the only ones dealing with the cold weather here this season. The Buckeyes may have left the state, but they're dealing with that cold weather as well. And just over 24 hours from now, those Buckeyes will kick off against Texas in the Cotton Bowl where a win would send the team to a national championship, but they may be playing that game amidst some wintry weather. Our cameras were rolling when the Scarlet and Gray stepped off the bus in Arlington last night. You can see them bundled up there. While the Buckeyes are used to wintry weather, some Longhorns fans are, well, they sound a bit concerned. So it was gonna be an exciting game for us to go and see in Dallas and be able to, uh, to attend. House divided kind of situation, was really looking forward to it. And then now the weather's turned up sour and we shall see <laughs> kickoff from AT&T Stadium is set for 730 tomorrow night. It's not just Texas that is under that cold weather, but they are certainly experiencing the worst of it right now. We are looking at a lot of snow sleet and ice moving through North Texas here this evening. This is a region not really prepared to deal with these kind of conditions. They got some brine out there that helps to pre-treat the roads, but when it comes to plows, salt trucks, things like that, that is not a site that you see down in the Lone Star State. And right now, Dallas is dealing with some of the worst of it. They've had heavy snow 
falling across the region throughout the morning on Thursday, but you can see as we work our way into the afternoon that is starting to transition over to some ice and freezing rain. No surprise of all of this mess moving through a lot of winter weather alerts across Texas. You can see from East Texas all the way out to Wichita Falls winter storm warnings in place. They are really going to be dealing with the impacts of the system throughout the evening and even the further south you travel winter weather advisories all the way down to Waco and out to San Angelo. It's going to be kind of a mess out there. The hour by hour forecast as we get closer to that cotton ball tomorrow, it's going to be a mess for the rest of the day today. Don't look to get out and about and really do anything. Anyone that's down there visiting for the cotton ball uh, touristing, trying to get around, see the sites. You're not going to get it done in this kind of weather. This is just going to bring the region to a standstill. This continues as we head into the early AM hours of Friday. We do get a break by the time we get into the day Friday. The bulk of the moisture has left the region by about one o'clock and we'll even see some sunshine before uh, kickoff tomorrow night. But the bad news is we're going to stay cold down there. We're going to talk temperatures down in Texas that stay uh, near to just barely above freezing. So this isn't going to melt off and they're going to have to really work hard to clear that snow and get things ready in time again for that cotton ball. And like we we're saying, it's not just Texas that is under the gun for this cold weather. Communities across the south are preparing for a powerful and rare winter storm. It'll span from parts of New Mexico to the Carolinas by Saturday, and many are preparing for that impact. One thing we want to make sure, and that is we, we maintain power uh, throughout this winter episode. We have added more than 10,000 megawatts of new generation just this year since the last winter. And forecasters predict parts of Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia and the Carolina will see greater impacts from the storm in Texas now as it moves there tomorrow. Many southern states could get inches of snow in several spots. This does not include, again, Dallas, where many of those Buckeye fans are, which is expecting accumulating snowfall. Of course, now we, we turn our attention from the winter weather to those fires out west in Southern California. Words used to describe the scene around Los Angeles have included apocalyptic, bombed out war zone, complete devastation. The fires uh, have been caused and fueled by unrelenting winds and drought conditions. Firefighters have been struggling to get an upper hand. Maribel Gonzalez is in Pacific Palisades with the latest. This picturesque neighborhood of the Pacific Palisades now looking more like a ghost town. Businesses and shops just like the one that you're seeing behind us burn to the ground in the overnight hours. I want you to take a, another look from our satellite truck. You can see the widespread destruction. Now this scene is repeated block after block in the downtown area. Buildings charred, uh, reduced to ashes, and this is far from over. Something this big and this fast that, you know, kind of just wiped out the whole town was something that I personally and I think a lot of people from around here never saw coming. Unrelenting wildfires are continuing to ravage parts of Los Angeles County Thursday, causing tens of thousands of residents to flee and more ready to go at a moment's notice. And I saw a big ball of orange with the smoke, so it looked like it was here towards the top of the hill. And I went back to the house and got some things. The Palisades fire has destroyed more than 1,000 structures, making it the most destructive in L.A. County history. Everything is just gone, and I just want to wake up from this bad dream. And the Eaton fire has quickly reduced much of the Altadena area to ash and rubble. This is our retirement. This is our nest egg. This is where we moved in when we got married. The nearby city of Pasadena told residents that the water there may be unsafe to drink because of debris from the Eaton fire and the health concerns are mounting. The air quality across Southern California has been deemed a hazardous six out of six because of all the smoke and ash swirling around. We couldn't breathe anymore. Yeah. And we had, we had all the filters going in the house. We had HIPAA filters and nothing seemed to work. Now this morning, the winds have definitely died down compared to yesterday, hopefully allowing the firefighters to get to those hard to reach area via aerial drops. However, they tell us that it, we're still not in the clear. Those drought, those dry conditions could cause more fires uh, to spread elsewhere, further complicating their efforts. For now, reporting from the Pacific Palisades, 
I'm Mary Bell Gonzalez. And here's some more video of those fires burning in California as seen from the air. They were at least able to get aircraft up to start fighting those fires in the last 24 hours. They were not able to do so once those fires first broke out. Again, it's, it's not uncommon to see those major fires in the West this time of the year, making it a little bit more uh, unexpected. The devastation of the situation is brought much higher by the number of people that are in this affected area. It really is uh, one of the population centers, a really dense population center out to the west. I want to go ahead and take a quick look at conditions they're dealing with out in California with this system as we work our way into Thursday afternoon. Still high wind warnings uh, from just to the southeast of San Diego or of Los Angeles down to San Diego. They have wind advisories in place across um, portions of the Palisades out there where they have been seeing the strong winds blow through up into the mountains. But the bad news is they also have a high wind watch in place as forecasters could see some of those strong winds come back into play with this system. Here's the model forecast out there. You can still see up in the mountainous areas some of those really high wind gusts. As we go through time this evening, we pick those gusts back up in times you can see their crest line up to 54 on the models out there. Those winds continue to fluctuate as we head past midnight and into the day on Friday. They do kind of take a bit of a break again out there early Friday, but the concern will be whether or not they pick back up right now, at least here in the models, things do look to uh, get better by Friday afternoon. No surprise with those winds and dangerous fire conditions. Red flag warnings remain in place across Los Angeles down through San Diego, a lot of south uh, western California there. Those red flag warnings continue until Friday at six o'clock. Now one of those wildfires in Pasadena where is where just a week ago uh, Ohio State played in the Rose Bowl. Now that area under evacuation orders and they're telling people to get out. We spoke to a Westerville family who is out there right now. They say the fires woke them up at three yesterday morning. It was a little uh, little scary, a little made you a little nervous because I was kind of afraid to go back to sleep because this one up the road in Pasadena is 15 minute drive away. So I wanted to be awake in case they said get out of Dodge. The Evans family says right now their goal is to stay until Monday, but they are playing that by ear. We'll have more coverage on those fires uh, coming up later tonight um, during our four o'clock, five o'clock, and of course at six. There also will be um, more reports from CBS News and on 10TV.com. And finally today, we usually end the show with some impressive video, but today that impressive video, somber as well. What you're looking at there is satellite images captured on Wednesday that showed multiple fires uncontrolled around the Los Angeles area, again, destroying hundreds of homes as thousands fled. The fire started on Tuesday, have killed at least five people with more than 100,000, again, that are ordered to evacuate. You can see just some of the before and after and just the intensity of the heat in those satellite images. A number of Californians' homes and businesses are also without electricity as these fires have raged, raged through the region. 400,000 in the dark um, as of Wednesday. Palisades wildfire has burned more than 15,000 acres in the Pacific Palisades area between the beach towns of Santa Monica and Malibu. Other wildfires also have sprung up in the area. A 10,600 acre fire near the city of Pasadena and a new blaze in the Hollywood Hills uh, as of Wednesday evening, forcing new evacuations. Parts of Malibu, Santa Monica also under those evacuation orders. Just really impressive the scale of those fires. Of course, our thoughts go out to all those suffering through that situation out to the west. Uh, we're going to be keeping a close eye on that. We're also going to be keeping a close eye on our winter forecast here in central Ohio and what the Buckeyes are continuing with down in Texas. That's it for now, though, as far as today's weather impact show goes. Of course, we'll keep you up to date with more Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martz. He'll be here 6 o'clock tonight with the latest forecast for us, and the news will cover all of those updates on the fire and the conditions to the south. Until then, you can catch more news and weather online, 10tv.com. Make sure you have a great afternoon.